Okay. This is just so we have a lot of backlog questions here. We want to get people on the air here. Are you ready? Chuck. Here we go. The question asker. Ready? Go. From Twitter. This is Noah Stevens, at Noah Stevens. If we measure deadliness as the percentage of global population killed, what is the most dead deadly plague in history? The 1918 influenza. Oh, nice. Awesome. 1918. Whoa. Great year. Unless you. Wait, wait, wait. Is that worse than the plague in the 14th century? In terms of total numbers, yes. In good. terms of percentage of population, plague was the worst. Plague right, was right. This is okay. perfect. The biggest so percentage. Good. Go. Uh, how many people died in 1918? Uh, it depends on somewhere between 75 and 100 million. Oh. <gasps> Whoa. Okay, that's twice the number of deaths in the Second World War. Go. Don't get the sniffles in 1918. Yeah. Uh, this is from um, Mahasan Abdullah. In the case of viruses and vaccines, if a disease gets eradicated, okay, will future generations still have to get vaccinated for those diseases? No. None. Nice. Good. Okay. Ooh, she's, she's getting she's the hang good. of this. She's good. She's good. <laughs> all right. So once it's gone, it's all gone. AKA smallpox. We don't vaccinate anymore. All right. Here you go. From Amanda Pau. This is, okay, what do you think is the most interesting historical plague or epidemic, viral or otherwise, and why is it so fascinating? Plague. It completely reshaped Europe forever. The, the politics, the, the, the food. The culture, the, the status of the church. The okay, which plague had many outbreaks? Which one especially? 14th century. For, the big one. Gotcha. The black, okay. the black plague. Absolutely. Black death. Black okay. death. Okay. Now, why it's got to be a black death? <laughs> Chuck. Okay. <laughs> Save that for another show, Chuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all of a sudden that's a bad thing. Okay. Here we go. This is for, Chuck. This is from Zach Sells. If a global epidemic broke out in the third world, how long would we expect it to take to reach across the planet? Also, are we more susceptible to a pandemic now because of air and sea travel or less vulnerable due to improvements in the medical uh, um, uh, community? No way to answer the first one because it depends on the dynamics of the spread of the particular microbe. And the second one, of course, we're more vulnerable because we're moving around more. Gotcha. Okay, so mobility matters greatly. And have greatly. we actually counteracted that vulnerability through medical technology? Well, better yes no? to counter it with surveillance. Gotcha. Okay, so not technology, but keep an eye on it. Gotcha. So we need an NSA for viruses. Good. Gotcha. Next. What is the simplest way, this is from Courtney Lake, what is the simplest way you have found to explain herd immunity? Have you ever encountered an anti-vaccination believer to the science of vaccines in your community? Not, not just people who don't believe in vaccines. Is there any science for that? There, well, there's plenty of science for why herd immunity helps and works and what happens when it's not working. And we have a measles outbreak out of control in Wales right now okay. because the anti-vaccine people won over so much of public opinion that people stopped getting vaccinated. Whoa, Wales. Wow. Okay. So just look to Wales, Courtney. There's your answer. All right, next. Right. Uh, could pathogens be, from Jared Connor, could pathogens be spread in the atmosphere... A recent study done by Georgia Tech researchers found that E. coli amongst a great deal of bacteria that formed a sort of bacterial sphere in the upper atmosphere. Yes, we now have proof that pathogens, particularly sporulating ones, can spread in clouds and rain down in locations far away. Oh man, that is one time you do not want to make it rain. Ooh, do you, do you stay inside when that happens? Well, you, you don't drink rain water. You don't know it's coming and you don't know it's You there. don't know for nothing. Next. Okay. okay, here's a good one from Al Giraldi. We're still in the lightning round. We're Go. still in the lightning round. Man, she's killing she's it. better than I ever she's was. She's killing she's it. Come back more often. Slowing it down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is the minimum size, sorry, from Al Girardi, what is the minimum size of a population that can support a viral infection? What is support? What, what, how do I so in other words, uh, for, for the virus itself, to, to be able to continue on its life, what's the minimum number of people you need in a community so it can spread and continue to be a, a virulent? In theory, one, if, that, if it's a slow-growing microbe and a slow-replicating one, for the duration of your life, you can be the host for it. Gotcha. So in theory, you could just be a vi I could be a virus of one. Like, like the army. You got it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Next. This is from Richard. This might be the last one, but okay. go quick. This is from Richard Fox. Has the link between a chicken virus 
and obesity been proven? Didn't even know we were asking that question in science. But First time I ever heard there was a link between a chicken virus and obesity. Mm -hmm. I think it, uh, by chicken virus, he means like a whole chicken and eating one in a city. <laughs> <laughs> fried I, I fried chicken. you've been at a certain fried chicken shop for way too long. Exactly. Fried chicken. Let's see if we have one more in here. One go. more in. Last one. one. In. Here go. we go. Quick. Uh, do the viruses used to transfer gene traits into GMO cores uh, survive in crops? No. Boom. Well, bada bing. Bang. Wow. Lori Garrett. Oh my damn! She rocked it. Holy! You God. crushed that lightning round. You <laughs> crushed it. That's all you got. You That's all you got. Well, I do have. Well, oh, she's calling you out. No, I got. Okay, That's let's try. If you, you can let's see if you can get this one in. If the human body's temperature rises when it gets a virus, couldn't that be an explanation for what the planet is going through right now? The planet is pretty much created by uh, created, so we couldn't have similarities. So, so, could Your temperature rises because of your immune response. A fever is part of your immune response against a microbe. Not a good analogy to the planet. Dude! Except just, in the Matrix when the, the, the Smith said, you are a virus, a virus. virus on the earth. Laurie Garrett, thank you for being on Star Talk Radio and illuminating our inquisitive uh, uh, listeners on infectious disease that was awesome. and viruses.